Sunday the 6th of June and possibly the most important COVID video you will ever see. This is all government data from Sweden and Ireland. It's actual data. I'll put the links below. So this is not censorable in anything but perhaps a 1984-like world. So who got the science correct? We had Ferguson in Imperial College London, which is massively funded by pharma and pharma interests, predicted around 90,000 deaths for Sweden with no real controls. You can argue about the number, but it's in the many, many tens of thousands, even with distancing, okay? What about Tegnell? He said he could be judged around this time of 2021, and he can. So what actually happened with no lockdowns and no masks even, right through two seasons? Let's take a look. Here's the actual data from Professor Isle Shire, and I'll put the link below to his article on this. And we're wondering what actually happened. But first we look at the trend line over many, many years in Sweden. And we note that we must use October to September period. You cannot split at December. That's an unnatural year. It doesn't encompass flu seasons. So we see the trend is pretty steady with bobbing up and down. But 2019 is notably low, and that would have left a lot of susceptible people to sadly be taken in the following flu season. So let's see what happened. Watch the birdie here. Reality is down here, plus around 364 per million. As you can see, these kind of cancel out almost. So this is reality versus what pharma told us would happen. And what was told to us is what drove all of the lockdowns. And remember, Sweden did this with no real lockdowns, just normal WHO 2019 guidelines for pandemics, which were correct all along. And they also did this with no masks. We'll zoom in a little and here are the actual numbers. You can see for 2020 flu season period, plus 364 and 19 was minus 300. And these are deaths per million, the only data you can ever use to judge pandemic impact. And it agrees entirely with Professor Michael Levitt's data from his Stanford team. Here you can see the dotted line of generally expected. You'll notice that many periods of 2020-21, the debt rates were well below expected, this is essentially dry tinder, as the phrase goes. And during the two seasonal surges, there was excess death. But the number of excess death roughly is around 300 per million. Note also that Sweden's second wave that was much touted in the media is actually very minor. And the deficit here gets bigger in the following few weeks. This is up to only early May. So really their second wave was very small in excess death for all the case hysteria you saw around Sweden here. And Sweden also politically and under international pressure had to do mock lockdown type interventions. It had to be done for appearances sake, but here's the reality. I did a video a short while ago and it showed Ireland's figures, which are similar to the average for Europe. What's the real world risk? You need to know real world risk from this problem. So I took the deaths with SARS-CoV-2 positive PCR from government sources, non-censorable this. I took the census data, non-censorable, and I worked out for below 70s as a large group. There were 600 with positive PCR and 4.4 million approx. 0.014%. And that's a one in seven and a half thousand risk for the under 70s generally. And that's with positive PCR. From American data, it's approximately the risk from death from poisoning or ingestion of gases. We then look at the under 50s as a group, 70 dying in 3.4 million, 0.002% risk of death with a positive PCR. One in 50,000 risk approximately for the under 50s, which from US data is approximately the death from fire or smoke inhalation. We look at the under 25 years as a group, 
There's a lot of talk about them now and about mass medication. Well, let's see what their risk really was over two full seasons and over a year of massive spread. Six in 1.65 million, 0.00036% actual real world risk. That's a one in 275,000 risk for the under 25s with positive PCR. And this is around half the risk of death from falling downstairs or off step ladders. And remember a key point that this data covers overwhelmingly people who had many comorbidities and other serious issues. So the risks will be vastly lower than these for people who are actually healthy. 50 to 60 group, right? 50 to 60 years old, there were 130 dying in 600,000 people, approximately 0.022% risk. That's a one in 5,000 risk for the 50 to 60 year olds. And that's death with a positive PCR with COVID. But note again that the real world risk for this group is going to be massively lower if the person in question is healthy, i.e. not comorbid. So these are the real world risks after over a year, massive spread because we saw over 25% PCR positivity in the sampling in both seasons. So there was enormous spread and yet this is the real world risk. We'll finish with official government uh, death registrations and we'll notice that 2020 is no different really than prior years. So remember the 4,800 deaths from COVID, supposedly, where are they? Because the actual CSO figures show no excess at all. Well, we'll show you that the COVID deaths make up a big chunk of the normal existing deaths that would be expected. So that's why there's no excess death because all of the with COVID deaths are simply part of a death rate overall that in its totality is pretty much normal. So hopefully it's helped you understand the actual risk levels from this viral problem and also understand the effectiveness from the data, non-censorable, not saying anything about the WHO, from the data, the actual real world effectiveness of lockdowns and masks, etc. And I think the lesson is Sweden were correct from the data and they used 2019 WHO pandemic guidelines at the summation of many decades of knowledge in this arena. And I think, yeah, I fully support the WHO 2019 pandemic guidelines, as did Sweden. Don't forget to subscribe and also to hit that little bell icon to make sure you're informed and get to counter some of the more corporate style science that's out there. So all the links are in the description box below and also really appreciate all my PayPal and Patreon supporters and anyone else who can continue to support me to provide all the material that I do. It's highly appreciated. So thank you.